Go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. I want to talk about a transfer of power. It matters who's in charge. It matters who's in charge in the United States in politics. It matters who's in charge in a business. It matters who's in charge in state and local and community governments. It matters who's in charge, who's in power. It matters who's in power in your home. And every time, and any time there is a transfer of power, there is a change. Change is coming any time there is a transfer of power. It can be, and now, a lot of times we think of transfer of power, it's going to be negative. Don't have to be. It can be good. It can be a, it can be a transfer for good. I know a lot of times I, I, I'm this way sometimes. You know, I think of things like a transfer of power. Oh, that's not going to be good. Things are changing. Something got bought out. There's a, uh, somebody new in office. It, oh, this might not be good because we don't know until they get in there and they start doing stuff, right? And still they, until they, you know, take over. Uh, if you work somewhere a long time, y'all have worked somewhere for a long time. What if they sold out next week and somebody else came in? It would change, wouldn't it, for y'all? would change everything and uh, because nobody leaves anything the same you know oh, we're not going to change anything we're everything going to go no they're going to change and even in politics when we put somebody elect somebody in there and they say oh I'm every one of them says I'm for you right I'm on your side I'm your friend bring me your babies let me kiss them I want to kiss your babies and shake your hand I'm your best friend I'm going to do what's best for you and they get in there and what do they do what's best for them because they have a will they have an agenda and they want to do some things and now they think what they're doing is the best it's the best this is oh this is going to benefit and this is going to be good and then a lot of times it doesn't turn out that way and it's all because we had a transfer of power. In Genesis 1 and 26, and it said, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Now don't miss that. Over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And uh, so by this time, God has already created everything else, hasn't he? Everything is finished, everything is done, and, and he creates man, doesn't he? Because he has created the earth, and it's beautiful. You know, the garden, he made a garden, everything. It's just, because God said it was good. You know, God said it was good. And he creates man, so he created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. God blessed them, and God said unto them. Now listen to that. that, that struck me. He made them in his image, and then he blessed them. If you're made in his image, you look like you'd already be blessed. If I'm made in his image, I'm already blessed, ain't it? But it said he blessed them because he blesses when he says something. And so he blessed them, and God said. He blesses him by saying, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That word dominion means to tread down, prevail against, reign, rule over. Subdue, he said subdue, it means to tread down, to conquer, force, bring into subjection. And I thought, God created this earth, and it was good. It was very good. And, but he tells man, I want you to have dominion. Just because God created it, and he created man, and he put him in there, doesn't mean that, it, that man can just lay on a couch and eat potato chips and watch TV. Right? You say there was no couches, there was no TV. You get the meaning. Right? Right? Even though God created it and it's very good, he expected man to take control of it. Everybody got quiet and everybody quit moving then. No, God's in control. 
No, he expected man. He created and he expected man. By what the words he used in the Hebrew, he expected man to take control of this. That he was going to have to subdue this place, to reign over, rule, to force, bring into subjection, prevail against. He was going to have to speak to things, wasn't he? Now, God didn't, and he put him in the garden in Genesis 2.15, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. The word dress means to work, to serve, to keep means to guard, to protect, attend to. Now listen to how the words that God uses when he creates man. He says, because you see there is the earth and there's nobody else on the earth and everything he's created is good and, but yet there is a, another spiritual force at work. And God has given him this earth. There is another spiritual force. Now, we're in, introduced to him, I think, in chapter 3. And he's called Satan. And he comes through the serpent. And he beguiles Eve and he tricks her and he deceives her, has God said. And so there was a spiritual realm going on other than the natural realm, wasn't there? And so that's why God said, you're going to have to protect this and keep this. Who's going to? Man is going to have to. God didn't say, now I'm going to take care of you. I put you in a bubble. Nothing can ever happen to you. No, he says, you're going to have to keep this. You're going to have to do this. You see, God gave the control and power to Adam. Well, Adam and Eve give it to Satan. Okay? You see, he should have given it to us. He gave our inheritance away. He gave what belonged to us away. He gave the power. He gave the control. He gave the earth away. His, his possession. Remember, I read it. He said, the earth, over all the earth. He was have dominion over all the earth. And so when he multiplied and had more offspring and had kids and this thing took off, that it was theirs, wasn't it? But now it's not anymore because he gave the control over to Satan. Uh, you see, God give it to Adam and Adam give it to Satan and then God gave it to Jesus and then Jesus gave it to us because he didn't get it through Adam. Adam sold us out and so he sent Jesus in order to give it. But we're living, most of the people in the church is living like we're still, it's still God to Adam to Satan and we're left out and we didn't get anything. It's poor pitiful us. And all God done was sent Jesus to die for us so that one day we could leave this God forsaken place and go to heaven and we're just, you know, meant to try to get by down here. Let's go to Matthew 9 and verse 8. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled. This is when Jesus had spoke to the man that was, I believe, brought in by four, and he was lame. He said, your sins are forgiven. Take up your bed, rise and walk. And he gets up. And they marveled. And glorified God, which had given such power unto men. They glorified God because he had given power unto men. Now notice, it didn't say they glorified God because that one man got healed. They glorified God because he'd given such power unto men. Because now that man has that power back then that means that not only that man got healed, but others can get that. Uh, the word power there is the word exousa. It's a sense of ability, privilege, authority, liberty, jurisdiction, strength. And, and people will say, well, of course he would give it to Jesus. There was no sin against him. Of course he would transfer the power to Jesus. There was no sin in him. There's none in me either. Jesus, 
He, he never sinned. I haven't either. Amen. Even in a small crowd, it gets quiet. You say, you know better than that. You have sinned. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Who am I in him? Romans 4.25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. The, that word justification denotes the act of pronouncing righteous. When he uh, was delivered for my offenses and was raised again, he was raised again. When he rose from the dead, then I became righteous. No, he's waiting on me to claim my act up. No. When Jesus rose again from the dead, it says he was raised again for my justification. And that word, if you look it up, denotes the act of pronouncing righteous. So he pronounced humanity righteous. Now everybody say, well that means everybody saved and everybody going to heaven. No, it means everybody has the, has the capacity, the ability now. Before you did not have that. Now there's a way made to where you can release faith and go, I've got that because righteousness comes by faith, not by works. Okay? Uh, now notice in 2 Corinthians, let's go back over for just a second. For he had made him to be sin. It doesn't say he made him a sinner. He made him to be sin. Jesus, it doesn't say he became a sinner and he committed the act of sins, but he became sin. He became the very thing that separated us. He became that. He took that upon himself because of what we done. He became that and he died. He took that away. It was all put on him, right? All of that, all our sin was put on him. Well, how it happened to him? He died. And so when he died, he took it with him. He nailed it. The Bible says, I don't know, I may have this in a minute. He nailed it to the cross. He took that upon himself. So he could transfer the power. Come on. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, that's a big statement. I don't know if a lot of the church gets. He was raised again for our justification. We're pronounced righteous. So Paul says, therefore, being justified or pronounced righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We have access into this grace. The power, the transfer of power from, from him to Jesus to us is by grace. And so it was transferred from Jesus to us by grace. Why? Because by faith we believe that we are the righteous of God. We believe that. And when we believe that, we step out of that old mentality of thinking we can't do nothing. We just got to take what God throws at us, what he gives us. He wants me to go through this. He's perfecting me. He's put me to the test. No, he's not. He's not doing that. He's not stealing, killing, and destroying. He's not putting disease and all this stuff on you. He's not giving you a bad day. He's not making life hard on you. No, he's, he's, how, does he, how does he correct us? How does he teach us? By the word. By the word. How do you teach your kids? <laughs> I leave them outside. When they do bad, I lock them outside. And make them stay outside all night. You know what that's called? Abuse. A bad parent. Right? 
Romans 5 and 12 said, For for as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Before the law, sin was not imputed to man. Held against. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Adam was the figure of him that was to come. Well, why wouldn't he be? Because Adam's made in the image and likeness, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of, of one many be dead, listen, I love the way Paul talks, much more the grace of God and the gift of by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Now notice this. He says in verse 15, he said, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift, but not as the offense, you see, God told them not to eat of that tree. Well, they took and they ate of it. Well, the free gift came just by faith, just by believing. He did it. And by faith we received that. And, and so, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one because Adam sinned, and he said, well, you shall surely die. So that passed on to all of us, didn't it? There was a transfer of the power of death onto all of us because now death has hold to all of us. And death is separation. We were separated from God. There was a separation from God and it passed on to everybody. So everybody is separated from God. And so that's what Adam gave us. Instead of giving us what God gave him, which was dominion, and rule and reign and power over all the earth. Adam gave us death. Thank you, Adam. And you say, thank you, Adam. He was so selfish. He was only thinking about himself. And that's why sin is. Sin just thinks about itself. It don't consider anybody else or what's going on. It just thinks of me, 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 me. You know? And so, he says... Death reigned by one. Much more. Now listen to this. Much more. They which receive abundance of grace. You have to receive all this grace. And of the gift of righteousness. So your righteousness, you've got to receive that too, don't you? Isn't that what it's saying? That you have to receive. You have to believe. Well, I received Jesus, but you didn't even think you were righteous once you received Jesus, did you? What did you, I'm just, a, how many years did we say, I'm just an old sinner? Saved by the grace of God, just an old sinner. No, the Bible says that we are the righteousness. You see, that's where, if we don't get this, we can't get the transfer of power into our life. Because we're still living under Adam's rule and reign. And we're still just taking what Adam gave us. And that's death. And we look at this body, and I can look at it and look at my hands and going, they're getting older. I'm getting, I'm getting weaker. You know, we grow, and then all of a sudden we start shrinking. Right? How tall are you? Well, I reached, uh, I think, 6'1 at one time, but now mm, I don't know if I can get to six foot. That's why I got to wearing heels. Get my stature back. Why? Because I'm going back down now. I saw a chart one time showed a baby and it growed up to be a man and then it showed him and then it goes back down the other side and we end up as babies again. You say, no we don't. Yes we did. You start out in diapers, you end up in... 
He says, listen, which receive and much more they which receive, because Christ has already done it, receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall what? Shall what? Shall reign when we get to heaven. No, shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. But what do we got to do to reign in life? Come on. What do we got to do to reign in life? Thank you, sir. That's what the Bible says. Well, I, I wish I could reign in life. Receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Start declaring yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When you mess up and you have a fight with your better half, you go, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When you lose your cool, Somebody cut you off and you tell them you're number one or number two. Or I'll meet you at the next traffic light. Don't forget to tell them you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right? My flesh. What about your flesh? You think your flesh makes God go, oh man, look at them. They've doctored that up. They've dolled it up. They've spent some money on that flesh. They're looking good. Or does he look at the belief that we have and the faith we have? And does he look at it and go, hey, they believe they're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because of what he did. They've received that. Look at them. And the devil... Devil says, oh, you mess up. You, you know, you mess up. You have all these thoughts and you do this. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, devil. Because that's how you reign in life. That's how there's a transfer of power. That's how there's going to be a transfer of power to the church that he brought and left us here. Romans 5.11 And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. That word atonement simply means reconcile. We've received reconciliation to God because a while ago I said we were separated. Adam gave our inheritance away. He gave our reign away. He gave our dominion away. He gave all of that away. Now we're reconciled back to God. It denotes to change or exchange. To change from one condition to another. And so by what Jesus did, the power and the rule and the dominion that God had gave Adam and Adam gave away, Jesus got it back for us. Now how much of the church, how many of you live like that? I'll wait for an answer. How many of the church today lives like we're ruling and reigning in life? Boy, it's been a hard time. Boy, I just can't kick that. I just can't stop that. I just, the devil's been on me all week. No. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have received abundance of grace and you have received your righteousness. You reign in life. You reign in life. Why, why hasn't this, why haven't people been reigning? Because they've not been taught. They've not been told. It's all by works. How you do, how you act. Do you say the right things? Do you pray the right prayers? Do you do all of this? No. Do you believe? Do you believe that he did this for you? You see, I'm not putting, oh, you're, you're exalting man. No, I'm not. I'm exalting one man and his name is Jesus Christ. I'm putting it all on him. Because apart from him, let me see, I may have something on that. I will here in just a minute. Colossians 2 and 13. And you being dead in your sins and your uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all, everybody say all, all. trespasses. Yes. Say this, he forgave, he forgave. All, my sins. all my sins. 
Did he? He forgave all my sins. Okay. Quick, okay, your kids. Okay. What's the thing you got wrote down if they do? That's it. They're not your kid no more. Back talk. If they ever back talk. If they ever tell me they don't love me. If they ever say I hate you. Brittany, I thought, she'll never say that to me. She's so cute, and we played together all the time when she was little. She'll never, she would never say that to me. If looks could kill, I'd be dead. <laughs> She'd have killed me. Hate would probably be too light of a word. She loathed me. Right? I mean, that just happens, you know. But you know what? She was still my kid. And I still loved her. Even though she hated me, didn't want to have nothing to do with me, didn't want to be around me. I still loved her. He says, having forgiven all, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers. He spoiled them. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. This is talking about a parade. That's what he's talking about. A parade when they got the victory and they took the spoil and they captured the enemy, they would parade them down Main Street to let everybody know, look how powerful we are. Look what we have done. And that's what he done. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over him. You know, the devil wanted everybody to know uh, Jesus didn't raise from the dead. He didn't raise from dead. The religious people went to them guards that come back and said, he rose, he's gone, there ain't nobody there. Two men shining in white, roll the stone away. <laughs> and they said, we'll give you money, don't tell it. Now if I knew the scriptures like they knew the scriptures, I'd have been saying, oh, thank you Lord, he's come. This was him. But they didn't. They wanted to keep it quiet because they were under the power of the devil. And so he wanted to keep the resurrection quiet because that was the power. That's what overcame them. Luke 9 and 1, he said, Then he called 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Uh, he gave them power dunamis, miraculous power, ability, strength, be able, can do, possible, over and, and authority, sense of ability, privilege, authority, liberty, jurisdiction, and strength. He gave them not only dunamis, but he gave them authority. Now, a lot of the church talks about dunamis. Oh, we got dunamis. Explosive, like dynamite. It just blows up. Well, that's probably what's been wrong with the church. We just blowed up. We should have been focusing on authority. See, that word power sometimes is, is dunamis and sometimes it's exusa. And it's authority. And authority is very important. Uh, it also means jurisdiction. You have jurisdiction. Uh, Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power... And that word there that he used in 1019, that word, I give unto you power, it's the word authority. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That word power there is dunamis. The enemy has dunamis power. That's a lot of power. He said, but I give you the authority over their power. And if you, they have power, I don't know why, why didn't he just take their power away? Well, there's no need if he gives you the authority over their power. Well, they have power to hurt me. They have power to come in and do something to me. He said, no, I'll give you authority over it, but with your authority, you're going to have to speak. Right? You're going to have to Take care of that. You're going to have to drink. No, no, you ain't doing that, devil. No, you ain't doing that, demon. No, you're not doing that in my life. No, that's not happening. 
Now this is not no, this is not going to do it. I read one time a, an old preacher, he got to having some health issues and everything because he's going around preaching so much, traveling everywhere and having health issues. And they told him, said, go to the doctor and find out what's going on. He went to the doctor and the doctor said, you've got six months to live. And he said, I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. And they said, I, we know what's wrong with you. This is what's wrong with me. He said, tell me what it is. And they told him, he said, thank you. Now I know what to speak to. So he spoke to it and he left. And he kept preaching for years after that. He said, I will not die but live. Because he understood, I have authority. I have jurisdiction. You know what jurisdiction is, don't you? We were coming down the road one time, me and another guy I used to work with 10, 11, 12 years ago. We were coming down out of Burksville, and it's a straight shot when you get to the state line right up on Pea Ridge. We were running 90-something. In a pickup. I mean, he's a letting it fly. I'm, I'm riding with him, and we're letting it go. Well, I can see down there in the distance, there's a Tennessee State Trooper. We're in Kentucky. I can see a Tennessee State Trooper sitting right at the line. And he's going down through there, and I seen it, and I looked over at him, and I said, you see that trooper down there? And he goes, where? And we're still, he's still, we're running. And I said, he's sitting there on the side. And we got down through there, and he goes, oh, it is, and he let off of it. We're running 90 something. He lets out of him and started hitting his brake. And I thought, well, you've got you a ticket. No. You know what the guy done when we went by? He went. And that guy went to laughing. And I said, what are you laughing for? And he goes, he can't give me a ticket. I was in Kentucky doing that. He don't have jurisdiction. You say, I don't know if that's right. It is right. If Tennessee's chasing you, they got after a guy here a while back. Well, it was back last year in Tennessee. They got after him. And they chased him. They couldn't get him to stop. And so they called Kentucky State Police. And when he crossed the line, Kentucky State Police converged on him. They took over the chase. Why? It's their jurisdiction. They took over the chase. They stopped him. They buried him the next day. He got out, wrecked the car, got out, and they shot him. That's the way Kentucky handles things. They're just like, end of story. Mm -hmm. And so they have, you have jurisdiction. You have jurisdiction. When you receive this power, you have jurisdiction over your life. Now, here's the problem with the church. They have taught that we have power so we can just bind the devil off the earth. How's that working? You can bind him off of other people's lives. How's that working? And because that didn't work, we go, this don't work. We don't have any power. We don't have any authority. Yes, you do. In your jurisdiction. That's why Jesus, when he'd go to a place and they'd say, we don't want you here, you know what he'd say? I'm, I'm here and I'm going to stay. No. He'd get back on the boat and leave. Why? Because they had jurisdiction over their life. And he couldn't override it. You see, this authority, if we receive it, gives us jurisdiction in our life to speak to things. He says, but you shall receive power... After the Holy Ghost, dunamis, power, after the Holy Ghost, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power when you receive Jesus as your Savior. Is that what he says? Well, Paul didn't know to write that. Well, no, Paul, or not Luke, but Luke knew what to write. He was under the inspiration. He said, Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you're going to have dunamis power. John 5, 19 in the Passion says, So Jesus said, I speak to you eternal truth. The Son is unable to do anything from himself or through his own initiative. I only do the works that I see the Father doing, for the Son does the same works as the Father. In another place, Jesus said, Of my own self, 
Now listen, this is Jesus. Of my own self, I can do nothing. Of my own self, I can do nothing. Jesus said that. The Word made flesh. Virgin born, Son of God. Said of my own self, I can do nothing. Why? Because He's in the flesh. Of my own self, I can do nothing but what the Father does. What I see Him doing. What He has given me to do. You see, it's time we got out of our own strength and got back into His strength and receive what he has for us and start reigning in life by Jesus Christ. That's what he said. I want you to reign in life. Matthew 16 and 15 says, He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood hath not revealed in thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The New Living puts that verse as, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. The NCV version says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The things you don't allow on earth will be the things that God doesn't allow. And the things that you allow on earth will be the things that God allows. Does that answer a question for you right there? That everybody's saying, well, God allowed this. God only allowed it because we allowed it. If you don't allow it, God doesn't allow it. If you allow it, then God allows it. Because he's not talking about in heaven what I do down here gets done in heaven. He's talking about the kingdom that we're a part of. He said, so whatever you allow in this kingdom, God's going to allow. You see the power that he has transferred to us? And yet the church has took the stance that we're just going to blame God for everything. God's in control. It's him doing it. We don't know why his ways are fat past finding out. We don't know why he does this, but he has a reason behind it. The reason is we didn't accept the righteousness and the grace that he had for us. But if we'll receive that, he said you can reign in life by Jesus Christ. Keys. He said I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. What do keys do? They give you access and control. Somebody, when we get done, give me the keys to your vehicle. I want the keys to your vehicle. Take that back. Everybody give me their keys to their vehicle. I want everybody's keys to their vehicle. And I want to see how you get home. I want to see what you do with that car. Now, I'm going to take them keys. I'm going to get in your car, and I'm going to drive down the road, and I'm going to hit people. And then I'm going to drive up and I'm going to rob a bank in that car and I'm going to drive away in it. And it's going to be your fault. Why did it be my fault? With your car. Your name's on the title, right? Your name's on the title. So it's your fault. You hit all them people. You robbed that bank. They seen you getting out of the car and they seen you getting back in it with a, that bag of money. Right? It's your fault, isn't it? You'd say, no, it's not my fault. I didn't have control of that. It wasn't my fault. You know how God feels now, don't you? Amen. We're his people down here. All this stuff is happening. And they go, well, that's God. It's God doing it. Blame God. God's going... No, my name might be on them, but I don't have, there's no access or control. They're just doing whatever they want to. No, when he gave us to the kings, he gave us ac the kingdom of heaven, he gave us access and control in the kingdom. So whatever you allow, he's going to allow. Whatever you don't allow or you bind, that's what's going to be bound. That's what he's saying. So stop blaming God when He has transferred the power 
unto us. But I believe the problem is we don't see ourselves as who he sees us as. That's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. You know, they'll say that. Oh, we're saved by grace, through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast about it. It's just by faith. Well, this faith receives the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And when you receive that, then you become righteous. And when you see yourself righteous, then you, have, you can reign in life then you can receive from God. Because in the back of our minds, right? Maybe in the front of our minds, we, we look at what we do, what we think, what we are, and we go, I fall short. I fall short of Jesus. I'm, no, I'm falling short of Jesus in this, you know? And so we pull back. We pull back. Well, I'm nothing. And we just live like that. Well, if you see yourself like that, you ought to step up there and go, hey, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I've not been acting like it. I need to start walking in this. I just need to start believing in this. I need to start doing this. You see, that's what, you know, gets it. If I got up here every week and beat you down because of you've done something wrong, now, how many didn't do something wrong this week? Raise your hand. Raise it with me. <laughs> you didn't do nothing wrong this week, right? You didn't do anything wrong this week. You, God, you got an A plus in God's book, didn't you? You done everything right, everything you were supposed to do. You, you done it right. No, and see, we look at that and we go, well, I missed it. God's mad at me. I can never do anything. I can't take my authority. I can't take my position. Why can't you? It's not based on what you did. It's based on what he did. And when you do that, when you say, oh, I can't do it, you're not taking away from you. You're taking away from Jesus. You're, you're bringing him down. Well, what he did wasn't good enough to make me righteous. Well, if it's not good enough to make you righteous, how do you know it was good enough to get you into heaven? What are you going to tell him when you get to heaven? What a great feat or great act have you done that's going to get you there? Mine's going to be faith. Mine's going to be, I believed what you said. I believed what he did. That's my great act was faith. I believed that. And because we believe it, it changes how we act and what we do. We speak to things. Because there has been a transfer of power to the church. We need to take a hold of it. And you have jurisdiction in your life. Start acting like it. This is, this is your life. Now I'm not talking about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. I'm not talking about those things. I'm not talking about the fivefold ministry and the giftings of things. I'm just talking about you in your life. You can receive power in your life, in your everyday life. You see, you say, well, I spoke to this over this community. I've been speaking to a religious spirit over Overton County for years. And guess what? He's still working. He's still there. I've rebuked, I've bound, I've done everything. And then I got to thinking, maybe I don't have that jurisdiction over everybody's life. And the Holy Ghost said, you think? Because if we can have jurisdiction over everybody's life, then we could speak all the bad stuff out. Speak all the good stuff in and they wouldn't have to do anything. But I can't do that. I can't go into somebody's house and start commanding their kids and commanding their wife to fix me something for supper. <laughs> I have a hard tough time at my own house. I want much less somebody else's. I'm sure that wouldn't go very good. I want this for supper, woman. <laughs> he won't work, will it? No. It doesn't work. You've got to have jurisdiction. And that's what he gives us.
Everybody stand.